Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So if you are new here, welcome. And if you have already been here, welcome back. If you don't already know, this channel is all about where I teach you how to start a boutique, how to make more money online, and how to create wealth and financial freedom. So if that sounds like something that interests you, make sure you hit that little red button below so that I can help the algorithm and that I can push out more free videos like this one. As you guys can read by the title, today I'm going to be kind of vlogging slash telling slash teaching you guys about how to set up a pop-up shop as well as my own experience with having a pop-up and in this video I'm going to be talking about some of the documentation that I had to provide, the tools I had to get, my crazy experiences and I have a story time for you that you are not going to expect so make sure you stay tuned for that and just kind of some tips I have and some advice I have for you guys in order to prepare for your first pop-up. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I wanna start out by talking about some of the paperwork that I had to fill out before I was able to start. So one of the first things that I had to get when I was doing my pop-up shop was insurance. And they had very, very, very specific requirements of how much coverage they needed and what needed to be covered. And in addition to that, if you had any kind of employees or if you were bringing in a car for display, you had to sign all these other waivers. So because I didn't have any employees and I wasn't bringing in a car, obviously I was able to waiver that and they gave me some waivers to fill out. So definitely you're probably going to need insurance and there's most likely going to be some kind of waiver that you will have to fill out. Now, how much is the insurance? Well, it depends on what kind of pop-up you're doing. So are you selling clothes? Are you selling popcorn? Is it outside, inside? Is it in a mall? Is it at a market? All those different factors are going to affect your rate and they definitely quoted me specific to my situation. So the number I'm about to tell you is not the number for everybody. It's going to be different based on your location, the stuff you're selling and things like that. So I only paid $80 for one month for my insurance and I also had the choice to pay $280 for the year, which would have been a great deal, but I was still testing the waters and I wasn't sure if I was going to run a pop-up in that venue again. So I didn't really want to risk it if I didn't want to sell there again and the traffic wasn't good. So I just went ahead and purchased the one month. My insurance was $80 bucks, and that is the first expense that I incurred while doing this. And so obviously, like I was mentioning before, I had to also sign some waivers. And for me, it was the workers' comp and the auto waiver. So the next thing is obviously you have to pay the rent, uh, which I will be mentioning the cost versus my profit in the end, so stay tuned for that. So I had to actually bring a money order or a cashier's check in order to pay my rent. I don't know if this is everywhere, but for some reason in Florida, everywhere where I've had to pay rent, or give some kind of deposit, they've always required a money order or cashier's check. Like I was never able to just pay with my debit card or you know, something simple. But anyways, I had to go to the bank and get a cashier's check and go ahead and pay my rent. So after I paid my rent, I was able to set up kind of like a tour with the lady who was renting it out to me. And basically I was just able to envision it and we were able to just talk talk together and see what needed to be adjusted for my pop-up. So I was able to tour it, which I thought was pretty cool and they were able to make some modifications for me. So I thought that was dope, like super cool that they could change it according to my situation. So with that being said, I think that is really all the documents that I had to fill out to get started. So insurance, waiver, um, rent and then yeah the tour oh and one more thing I had to get all my fixtures approved so basically my mannequins mirrors my table cover and my hanging racks had to all be approved before I could bring them in so that is the last thing I had to do now I want to go ahead and tell you guys about some of the tools that I was using that I thought was super helpful for my pop-up and I'm basically going to separate this into the must-haves and the nice-to-haves and keep in mind this list is not all-inclusive. This is just going to be the most important tools and then some of the things that you're absolutely going to need. So if you're running a clothing pop-up like I was, you are definitely going to need some hanging racks because how are people gonna find your stuff if you don't have hanging racks, right? You don't want people digging through boxes, you don't wanna have it all ghetto in there and people are getting lost, they don't know where anything is, everything's out of order. You wanna have hanging racks and you wanna make sure you have extra hangers to keep it nice and neat. So I'm going to say that that is one of the first things that you are going to need. And then I think for sure if you have a clothing store, I would recommend investing into a pop-up changing tent because I did that and that thing was heaven sent. 
Like, when I tell you guys I was heavily debating on not getting one, I'm just so glad I did because I want to say 8 out of 10 customers wanted to try on the stuff before they bought them. So definitely I'd say invest into a changing pod and then have a mirror because with clothing, especially if you're selling clothes like how I do, where it's kind of body contouring and it's got some cutouts and it's kind of like that batty aesthetic, people are going to want to see what that looks like on them because that's not something they can just purchase like a track suit and assume that it's going to fit them well so depending on the clothing that you're selling I'd say a mirror changing pod must-haves so one of the things that I also invested in was some hanging mannequins and I didn't get real mannequins because one they're super expensive and two they take up a lot of space so these hanging mannequins off Amazon are literally the bomb.com I do wish however that they had plus size mannequins and even like a size large mannequin because a lot of people were walking past my store and assuming that I didn't sell anything that could fit them so that is definitely one thing that I kind of learned with this pop-up was that you should display sizes that are as inclusive as possible somebody like me for example I'm like a medium or large and I also wouldn't shop somewhere where they only display size smalls or extra smalls so definitely get some hanging mannequins and get some different sizes because that's definitely something that I could have done better so one of the other things and this is kind of one of the things that you don't really think about is a loading cart and you definitely want a loading cart just trust me on that one I did not have one and I almost went into that mall loading things hand by hand and thankfully my brother was there to help me and I actually bought one of those nice grocery wagons beforehand and I was able to use that so I would say at least have a dolly have a wagon have something because bringing that in hand by hand to your tent is going to be a headache so get a loading cart that is something that you are going to definitely want for your pop-up all right card readers let's talk about them so rumor has it that when you use a card reader it is better to have the one that is directly compatible with your host now what I mean by that is if you have Shopify try and use a Shopify card reader even if it's $50 because I know this one girl who had Shopify and used a square card reader and she said that thing was given out it was not working and that thing was ratchet the whole way through so I did not want that happening I did not want to risk it I went ahead and invested $50 into a Shopify card reader and let me tell you I do not regret it that thing takes Apple Pay, Google Pay, it takes debit cards, it can count cash for you, it can open a till, close a till. When I tell you guys, get Shopify POS and specifically the Shopify card reader. If you're using Shopify, just do it. So you can also use a Square card reader if you're using Square Commerce. I don't know exactly how that works, but basically make sure that your card reader is matching the website host that you're using. That way you can avoid issues and not have as many glitches and stuff in your system. You're also not going to need a third party to integrate them, so that is just going to save you a lot of headache. So make sure to get a good card reader and make sure to also have a POS system to bring your customers out on. So with that being said, I want to go ahead and show you guys my packaging to maybe just give you some inspiration if you're feeling, you know, lost on how to sell your items and how to give them out. So basically what I did was I got this little black baggie from Amazon and I stuck some pink tissue paper in it to really give it that look. And it came in all kinds of assortments, so it had a size for just jewelry, for small things, medium things, and large things. I think it really looks cute for just a first time thing. If you wanted to, you could even add a sticker right here or, you know, do your own cute little thing. So I will have everything linked down below so that way you guys can have access to things for the low low and for pretty decent quality. And then I would also stick these little place cards in there that just say thank you and then it says basically to tag us in the Instagram, you know, post a picture and all that. And just a little side note, I actually sell these on Etsy, so if you need templates or you need help creating templates, go ahead and check out my Etsy shop and you should be able to purchase one and edit it to your liking. So it just looks like this for up close reference and yeah. So it would be like a little bag and just a little place card. And people thought it was super cute. I thought it was totally worth it and these bags weren't even that expensive. So yeah, you can definitely use that for some inspiration. I also want to show you all this other really cool thing that I didn't know about and I accidentally found out about and you freaking need this in your life. It's a freaking 
cash box. Yes, a box for cash. And at first, I was just going to get one of those money aprons, but I just didn't want to be carrying it around and, you know, having all that baggage weighed down on me. So I bought this little cash box, which is literally a box that has a coat on it. And you just basically open it up and it has these little slots where you can put your bills inside of. So, you know, 20s, 10s, 5s, 1s, whatever. And then you could also open up this little compartment here and it has some spots for coins. So I thought this was so creative. I didn't even know that this existed and it made taking cash just so much easier and I didn't have to worry about somebody stealing it because it also came with like a little uh, security lock thingy that you could put on your table. So for 25 bucks, I thought it was so worth it and it has a little carrying handle so it's easy to carry and you can just stick it right under your table so nobody sees it. So I think if you have a pop-up, you should definitely get one of these little cash boxes and just save yourself the time and hassle and use it to carry around cash. So that was one of the things that I got. And then this other thing, which nobody's gonna tell you about these, so just thank me later. It is something called Yita Picks. I think that's how you say it. But they're basically like clothing picks that you can use to tighten the clothing on the model so it looks better. Um, and the reason why I like these, and I tell you that people will not tell you about these, is because they are metal, so they're not going to break and they have rounded edges so they're not going to ruin your clothes or clasp onto it. I know a lot of boutiques use the wooden ones and I personally hate those because they leave splinters in your clothes and they can also scratch and ruin materials like satin. So you should just go ahead and get these because they were pretty cheap from what I remember. Um, they're quality 304 steel and it's a pack of 40. So they're literally perfect. I was using them all throughout my pop-up and it literally worked magic in converting my sales when they saw it on the mannequin. So definitely get these and yeah. So I think that is all the things that I got and I recommend that you get. And now I want to get into the things that you are going to absolutely need. So the things you are going to absolutely need is either a fully charged phone, iPad, or some other kind of device that can handle a POS system. Now if you don't know what a POS system is, basically it's just a software that you can ring people out on and it takes all the transactions. So just make sure you have a fully charged device and on top of that have a freaking portable charger because I cannot tell you how many times I had to use that thing. So I'm going to link the one I had below because it's literally incredible and it was pretty cheap and worked the same way as the ones that are $100 and $120. So like I said beforehand, I'll be linking everything down below. So just make sure to go ahead and check out my list, especially if you're needing some help. My pop-up was also three days, so I did also bring tarps because I was recommended to bring some by security just in case. So if you're going to have an overnight pop-up, especially if it's indoors, make sure you're getting some tarps. And there is a good one on Amazon for like 10 bucks. That is huge and it has a lot of area coverage. So the one that I linked below is the only one that you're going to need. So let's move on let's move on to some of the things that i brought because i am a little bit extra and i have to be over prepared rather than under prepared so one of the things that i brought just in case was my pricing gun my tagging gun my hang tags my barbs size stickers a lint roller my seam ripper and basically just all of my private labeling materials and before you come at me the reason why i brought all of this was in case somebody was trying something on and the tag came off or i had to reprice something i just wanted to go ahead and be prepared and yes I did have to use these things so that is just some of the things that I brought because I'm extra oh and also I bought a $30 JBL speaker which is on sale at Amazon and Target right now that did an incredible job and basically whenever customers would walk past me I would blast it to make sure they noticed me and then they would turn their heads and see my stuff and then come and buy now of course you don't want to do this too too much but the specific speaker that I had it didn't even have the capability to really play that loud so people were going to hear it one way or another but it wasn't going to be overbearing I know that's something kind of silly but it's something you can try if you want to so I would basically just have my phone in my back pocket and then anytime I saw somebody who could be a potential customer walking by I would just go ahead and turn the volume all the way up and if they continue to walk I just turn it back down to the normal volume again so that's something you can do if you want to and let me know if it works 
So that is some of the things that I think you definitely need for your pop-up and then some of the things that I bought just in case because I want to be prepared and I want to make sure that everything goes the right way. So now that we've talked about the tools, we can move on and talk about some of the things that I had to do to prepare for my pop-up. Now these are things that I had to do before basically bringing all my inventory and setting up in person and just kind of like the preparation. So what I did was I basically private labeled and tagged everything before I went in because when I ship things for online orders, my tags actually don't have the prices on them. It's just the clothing tag and just my company name and all that. So I had to actually price everything so I didn't have customers asking me for the prices every two seconds and I highly recommend that you do that and get a pricing gun that will help you do that as well. So after I private labeled everything and put the prices on all the tags, I went ahead and hung it all up and kind of did like a mock-up in my house to see what collections would go together and what looked good and what didn't. So I basically just color coordinated everything and that's what I recommend that you do because that's the most flattering thing to the human eye. So if you don't know how to organize your collections, I would say just go ahead and color code it. So once I did that and hung everything up and everything, I went ahead and just organized it all into boxes. So I would have collection one in this box, collection one in this box. So I knew that these two collections go together when I go ahead and go for setup. So I would basically do that to all of them and then I would have my second collection, third collection and so on. And then when I went in to actually put the stuff up, it was already hung and it was pretty easy and seamless and it didn't take that much time. So I pre-hung everything, pre-private labeled everything, and just double checked that it looks good on a hanging rack. So some of the other things is I obviously had to make a checklist of tools and a to-do list to not forget anything because there was a lot of preparation involved, guys. This whole process took me about a month before I was able to do the pop-up. So yeah, I think that is all the main things I had to do. Obviously, there was other things like printing my social media handles and getting my cash broken at the bank, but I don't wanna get into the too nitty gritty details because I don't wanna bore you guys. I want this video to kind of just help you and also be a vlog at the same time. So for your planning, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you write out a list of things to do. That way you're not forgetting things and you're not doing things last minute. So you could start by doing all the things a month in advance and then just checking that list every day or every week to make sure that you are not forgetting anything. So for me, one of the things that I almost forgot to do was to approve my fixtures, which would have meant that I wouldn't have been able to have my tent, my mirror, my mannequins, my table cover at the pop-up at all. So make a checklist and make sure you're following through with it and checking things off. And just make sure you're not missing anything crucial and you're not missing any important supplies that you have to bring. So do that for your to-do list and your supply list. I definitely recommend that you learn to use your POS system first because, for example, I did my first transaction and she wanted to go back and add something and I didn't know how to cancel it. So make sure you learn how to use the POS system. That way when you are with customers, you're not stuttering, things aren't going wrong, and things aren't um, being inconvenient. You don't want to not know how to do an exchange or a return or add things on or override a price. So make sure you just mess around with it a little bit and do some test transactions. And I think that is one of the most important things that you should be doing. I recommend that all of you also write a brand story and create a good sales pitch because number one, having a brand story, it helps customers to resonate with you and increase brand loyalty. So if they know the face behind the business and if they know who's running it, how they started, what their goal is with the business, they're going to be a lot more likely to purchase from you because they can connect with you and they can relate to your situation and want to support you even more. So I definitely recommend to write a brand story. I'm probably going to do a YouTube video at some point teaching you how to do that. So make sure you stay tuned for that and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss it. And also have a good sales pitch, have good promos. So anything that's gotta go in your store, make sure you are adjusting your sales to help you do that. Now what I mean by that is I had a whole lot of sales items that just had to go. It was old inventory, it was no good inventory, it was just stuff that was out of season. So basically what I had was a spend 50, get 10% off because if you look at my spring collection, a lot of the things are $40, $35, 
$42 and if somebody spends $50 and gets 10% off, they can basically get two items for the price of one. So I would just offer like, hey, this dress is $42, just so you know, we're having a spend 50, get 10% off. So you basically can get two items for the price of one. And then they would be interested, they would start looking around, and they would throw something in. So that's an example of giving a good promo and having good upsells and upsells that make sense for your business. And I'll be talking more about this later in the video and how to help yourself by having sales that make sense. So definitely figure out a sales pitch, figure out your selling techniques, don't be pushy, don't act like somebody that you are not. Just follow your heart and be the person that you would want to be and you would want to purchase from if you were the customer. Just be your best and provide your best customer service and I promise you that it is going to go super, super well for you. So now it's time for the story time and this is a story time that I was not expecting, my friends were not expecting, my family was not expecting, nobody was expecting this, but actually on day two of my pop-up shop, there was a shooting scare in the mall. So basically what had happened was um, I had my pop-up stand and there was a carousel right next to us. This is my pop-up shop guys and literally that is the carousel that he jumped off of. So I literally saw that happen um, and I'll be inserting this for story time on my YouTube channel. And what happened was um, it later came out on the news that this guy was on cocaine and he had jumped from the second story of the carousel down to the uh, first floor and then down to the mall floor, if that made sense. I'm going to insert a video of the carousel so it can kind of help you visualize it. Um, so basically what he did was he jumped off the second story to the first story and then he like jumped out of the carousel. And what happened after that was he had his arms up and he just started running around the mall screaming. Like he was just going, yeah, yeah, f yeah. And just screaming things that people couldn't understand. And this guy was literally doing this for like 10 minutes and security just looked at him, looked away and kept on walking. So he was just literally running around the mall screaming with his arms up, just saying weird things and nobody was paying attention. So at this time, my friends had actually came to support my pop-up and we were just kind of looking at him weird. So I had seen this guy earlier and I didn't think anything about him. I mean, he looked kind of weird. He gave me kind of like hippie vibes, but I didn't think that he was going to like, you know, shoot up the place. So to help you envision it, this guy had an eye patch and long hair and just some like basketball shorts and a muscle tee and yeah he was running around screaming and so me and my friends were just staring at him and at first we were laughing and making the Florida man joke because we're in Florida and specifically where I live there's just a lot of weird things that happen and so we were just laughing at first and then my friend starts you know saying like if he starts shooting she starts basically saying that he's the type to start a shooting and she says if he starts shooting that we're going to run towards her car and I was basically just saying that nothing was going to happen but if we did have to run we were going to run into Victoria's Secret because it was directly across from us and there was an exit so yeah this guy was running around for like 10 minutes and then next thing I know there's all these people running and then again I thought it was a joke because at first I was seeing like 14 year olds and teenagers running and I thought they were just doing something dumb and being stupid or doing some kind of prank so I was still laughing me and my friends were still laughing and then two of my friends are staring and then I caught on and then next thing we know it a huge flock of people just start running and I grabbed both my friends and I said let's go and we ran towards the back of Victoria's Secret we were trying to get to exit and then this Victoria's Secret employee who I think should be fired to this day literally blocks the entrance and says nobody is allowed to leave I cannot have anybody back here like, excuse me, in a life or death situation, don't nobody care about your panties. Your panties are not more important than somebody's life. And I was baffled. Like, this lady was literally standing in front of the entrance telling people they could not leave. And so we were all literally saying, please let us out, please let us out. Um, this is life or death. And she was saying, okay, if there's a shooting, everyone's going to duck down. We were all like, what the f And basically, like... Everybody was saying she was tripping. There was literally a 17 year old girl crying, begging for her life. And it was so sad to see. Um, and basically what ended up happening was I was 
right next to the woman who was blocking the exit with my friends and I was telling her let us through let us through she wasn't and finally this guy came through and was like hey I don't want to get violent but I'm gonna have to push you if you don't get out of my way and so what ended up happening was I literally crawled under her legs the guy pushed her and once I was able to get to the other side I was telling my friends to come over so one friend made it and I thought we both thought our other friend made it because my friend thought that she had grabbed somebody's arm but then when we turned around our other friend was not there so we waited in the hallway for a few minutes and everybody was freaking out because somebody had yelled there's a shooting so now people were getting down running crowding like it was a whole nightmare in the middle of my first pop-up shop and so after waiting a few minutes we didn't see our friend we had no idea what to do so my friend suggests to run so we're literally just running for the exits we literally get to the back of the building and just book it and we literally got in our car we started calling my friend the first time she didn't pick up the second time she finally picked up and we literally told her to just push past the lady and when she was finally able to get through we were waiting for her she ran and everything and she didn't even get to get into our car fully and we literally just skirted off like we didn't stay uh, we were telling people to turn around because people were trying to get into the mall and yeah so at this point i mean my friend had calmed down the one that was suspicious from the start that there was going to be a shooting and me and my other friend were already calm so part of the reason why i was calm was that i kind of knew that it wasn't a shooting because i would have heard the gunshots you know they would have been really loud and especially in a place like a mall and the vicinity and how close it was to me i would have definitely known that there was a shooting happening so basically um, a bunch of cops were pulling up and we got out of there before anything went down i didn't have any of my stuff i just had my cell phone and that's it i didn't have my keys i didn't have my money my cash was out there everything was just out there so yeah basically the cops had gotten back to us and said that there was no shooting what had happened though was this guy got naked in the middle of the food court and tried to kidnap a little girl. So he um, basically just got naked and started running away with a little girl. But the cops got him and the girl is safe, thank God. Um, everyone's safe, nobody got hurt. But it just sucked that it had to go down like that. Not just for my pop-up, but it's just sad that things like that happen and it was very unfortunate obviously for my pop-up shop but nonetheless i'm glad everybody was safe and it's kind of funny like it's not funny but after a situation like that all you can do is laugh about things so yeah just to clarify it was not a shooting um what ended up happening was it came out in the news that some people were mistaking the shutting of the gates as a shooting basically one person panicked and everybody ran so I was calm and part of the reason like I said was because I knew it was not gunshots and yeah so that's a crazy story I mean it didn't necessarily ruin everything but everybody pretty much shut down early there was nobody in the mall after that and so that definitely ruined some of my sales but I'm honestly glad everyone's okay and the little girl did not get kidnapped because in a situation like that that doesn't even matter so that was my crazy story time and I don't want to get too off track so I'm just going to continue on with the video. Um, just always be careful guys and do be vigilant because in a situation like that if it really was a shooting I would have been too airheaded and been probably playing it off as a joke until the shots came firing. So just be safe y'all. I don't want to get off topic too much but I just want to start wrapping up this video with the cost of running it, how much I made, what I could have done better, my overall experience and then just some tips and advice I have for your pop-up. My cost of rent was $800 and $56 in taxes. So in total I paid $856 for 3 days to run my pop-up. 856 divided by 3 that's about $285 a day so it's not that bad but the thing that sucked was I wasn't given a choice to select less than 3 days so I had to pay that $856 so that is how much it costs for my specific pop-up to run there are lots of pop-ups who do it for way cheaper my friends have been able to book things for $400, $300, $200 so just because mine was $800 does not mean that yours is going to be $800 and in fact, it's actually pretty unlikely unless you're doing it in a mall like how I did. So my rent was $8.56 and then I was also kind of extra with my equipment. Like I had bought way too many hangers. I was definitely overprepared. So my equipment was somewhere around $500. So what that meant was I would have to make around $1,300 in order to break even. 
So with that out of the way, I want to go ahead and say that aside from the mall shooting, there was also very heavy rain the first two days of my pop-up. So literally nobody came to the mall. The businesses across from me didn't get any business. The businesses behind me to the side of me, like we were all just kind of looking at each other and we're like, it's because of the rain. So it's very unfortunate that the first two days of my pop-up, pop it rained really hard. And on top of that, we had that shooting scare. So both of those factors definitely affected my sales by a lot. But that's okay because we live and we learn and things only get better once you do them the first time. So I just want to disclaim that real quick. I made $994. Now I could have just been dishonest and said $1,000, but I want to keep it real with you guys and let you know that I made $994. So I made $994 from the pop-up alone and then I had a $50 order placed right after that. So in total from the beginning of my pop-up to the end of my pop-up, I made about $10.45 or so. But if we're counting just the POS sales, it was $9.94. If we're not counting the equipment, I guess I did break even and make a little bit of a profit. But I am going to count the equipment because that's not just something you can dismiss from your expenses. So with the equipment and everything, I did not break even and I did not profit. But I did get a lot of exposure, a lot of people learned the face behind the brand, and I got a whole lot of Instagram followers and word of mouth marketing, which was my overall goal for this pop-up. So at this pop-up, it wasn't even my goal to profit. It was my goal to, at the very le least, break even. Now, obviously, I didn't do that, but I was able to get that exposure that I wanted and that kind of connection that you just don't get online. It's that person-to-person -person connection, that human feeling, when people can feel your energy and they can understand who the person is that is selling this product to them. So I was just really happy that I got to meet all my customers and that I got to know the type of people who are buying from me. And I just learned a whole lot in this process and just the learning experience alone is invaluable. There's no price tag that you can put on the learning experience of this all. Would I do this again? Absolutely. I think I learned a lot about my demographic and the kind of people who buy from me, what they do in their free time, where they shop, their age range, whether they have kids or not. And I just think I learned a lot of things for future marketing purposes that I wouldn't have otherwise known. So I would absolutely do it again. I'm actually already planning for the next one. And to wrap this up, I just wanna talk about some of the things that I learned and could have done better and some of my overall advice slash tips to you. So what I learned slash what I could have done better is I definitely could have had a banner that had my brand name on it because people kept walking past my pop-up and they didn't even know it was there. So what I basically mean is, so if you look here, it says the pop-up shop and a lot of people think that this is my store's name. So there's nowhere really that you can see where it's batty all night. So you see pop-up shop, pop-up shop, pop-up shop, and then my brand name's right here. So had I had a sign that goes up here or maybe even to this side, it would have been a lot better and my conversion would have probably increased in store and in um, online. So I do recommend to, you know, tour the venue before you come here, which I did, but it was just something I didn't really realize until the time came to it. So you can learn from my mistakes and have, you know, like a better experience for your pop-up shop. So I really didn't understand the importance of branding until I did the pop-up. Um, I thought I had enough branding, but when they mean brand, they mean to brand. So make sure you are having branding from the top down. So that sucked because everybody would take pictures of that and not my logo. So I don't want to ever make that mistake again and I don't want anyone else to ever make that mistake again. So definitely just brand as much as you can and brand as much as you can afford to within your budget. So I would definitely get banners if I were you that people can at the very least see and know that it is your store and not something else that's at that spot. So definitely do that. And then I think one of the things that would have personally improved my conversion was if I had bins for my sales items. So instead of the customer finding out about the spend 50, get 10% off and having to look around, it would have been just a whole lot easier for them to be able to look at either some clothes folded with a sign on it or something that could indicate that that was a sales item. I think I would have had a lot more customers that did want to spend $50 to get the 10% off because there were some people who were like, nah, I don't feel like looking and they didn't end up getting another item. So I think really clarifying your sales would help out. Um, on day two of my pop-up, I added a bunch of signs that actually specified that this was on sale, this was buy one, get one, 
and not just the little sign that I had on the front and I noticed that that improved conversions by a lot so I went from nobody even touching my jeans to people purchasing four pairs of jeans at once so definitely have your sales noticeable and have it very clear that that specific item is on sale I would say also have your upsells such as your purses jewelry accessories and the little things in the front because if you think about it when people are shopping what do they do when they get to register they start to browse and look around while you're doing your little thing and then they end up picking it up I know you have seen this at Walmart at Marshall's at Target where you are standing in line and you end up grabbing a piece of gum or a phone charger or something that you saw that you just remember that you needed so it works the same way in all retail spaces and I actually knew this old trick but completely forgot about it for some reason so have your upsells in the front and then just a little piece of advice I have for you is don't overthink your inventory and don't think that you need a whole bunch of inventory to do a pop-up because that is literally exactly what I thought and I cannot be any more wrong because the things that sold the most and pretty much sold out were my best sellers so I think you need about five best sellers to really run a pop-up successfully and to maybe just have some things here and there to complement it or that they can purchase along with their thing or just some things that you sell on the side so have at least five best sellers stage them really well so people definitely go and buy them now coming to the tips slash advice that I have for you guys have some pictures ready of the outfits that you're selling because some things are kind of confusing when you look at them and the customers are going to want to see it either on a person or model or something because I've had quite a few of these situations when people looked at it and they were like how do you wear this and I had a picture and an album that I created beforehand to help them and show them what it would look like if you were to put it on so definitely have photos of items especially if it's something that you really couldn't visualize if you just looked at it so that's a good tip I have for you guys because that also helped improve my conversions and help people to purchase and also make it a habit to count your inventory I cannot tell you how wrong I was for not counting my inventory from now on I'm definitely going to be doing it because I have literally underestimated how many times vendors will either short you or give you the wrong size or send you a defective item and I just really should have been doing this from the start but for whatever reason it is just not something that I ever implemented so definitely count your inventory like I was saying earlier you want to create sales pitches that are smart specifically to your store so for example I had purses that weren't really selling well online so I had a 20% off sale on purses in my store all my purses actually sold out and I don't think I'm going to be really selling them unless I'm preparing for a pop-up and I'm trying to have some upsells because I noticed that they sell well at my pop-up but for some reason not online that's an example of having a smart sale and then I also had a buy one get one 20% off jeans because I'm trying to discontinue and no longer sell just the basic jeans that you can get anywhere so having a buy one get one 20% off definitely help me get those jeans out and also profit at the same time like I was mentioning earlier I did spend 50 get 10% off because a lot of my things are $42 $40 and I had a lot of sales items I had to go that were around $10 $5 $7 and people were able to grab that and just help me get rid of that old sales inventory that I did not want so that is the tip I have for you guys and if you need help I don't know brainstorming or something or trying to figure out what kind of sale to do for your pop-up give me some of your ideas and let me know kind of your situation and maybe Maybe I can help you brainstorm too so yeah that is another tip that I have for you guys and then really honestly just go visit some pop-ups in your area um, go see how the traffic is what kind of stores are around it what kind of people go there what kind of vendors are there so that way it can really give you an idea of the kind of demographic is there and whether that place is going to be right for you or not to do a pop-up I think this is it I just have some last words for you guys do not limit yourself, do not judge yourself too hard, do not assume that things are not right for a customer just because it doesn't look good on you. I know we have all gotten things where we bought it, it looked cute, and then we tried it on and thought it was ugly and then started discounting it. So don't do that because I was surprised by how many things my customers actually loved on them that I hated on myself. And people were just willing to buy it and it was not my expectation. So don't judge yourself, do not judge your inventory too hard, do not limit yourself. I used to tell myself all the time that I suck at talking people, that 
I would be so terrible at making connections, but I had nothing but compliments. I had nothing but people saying how great my vibe and energy was because I had to turn around and actually tell myself, you are good at this, you're going to get better at this, and you are amazing at this. And you'd be surprised by what kind of skills you develop by doing things that are uncomfortable for you. So I say don't limit yourself, don't tell yourself that you can't do things because if you're telling yourself that you can't do that, what's to stop somebody else from telling you that you can't do that? If somebody comes up to you and starts talking down on your situation, how are you going to defend yourself or how are you going to confidently walk away not allowing those words to disturb you if you don't believe in yourself? So I just say really believe in yourself, don't set your limits, and also don't focus on the end result and don't be so focused on just hitting that specific expectation. If I had went into this pop-up shop and I expected $2,000 in sales and then saw that I didn't get that after three days, I would have just been devastated and probably never done it again. So have goals and set yourself milestones that you do want to achieve, but don't be too hard on yourself and don't beat yourself down when you don't achieve those goals or you don't get to those milestones. The most important thing is that you tried your hardest, you were the best person that you could be, and that you did your best. Don't give up, keep doing it, you got it. And just know that with a lot of hard work, patience, and a steep learning curve, you can learn to do anything and you can be successful. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know it was lengthy, and if you watched the whole thing, I appreciate you so much. I hope that it helped you out and kind of inspired some of you guys and kind of helped you understand what it looks like to run a pop-up shop, what it looks like to prepare a pop-up shop, and some of the things that you could do in order to prepare. So like I said before guys, thank you so much. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and turn on that notification bell. And stay tuned for more videos because I am dropping gems every single week and you do not want to miss that. So again, for the last time, thank you guys so much and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!